So, first of all, what I'm going to do is give you a rundown of today, um, and then we'll get the first speaker up and going. We have uh, an itinerary done by Fran, and uh, it's changed. So, I'm going to read it. So, we've got tea and biscuits at 11 o'clock. So, we will stop here, walk down to the refectory, where we'll have our tea and biscuits, 15 minute break, back here. Um, and then lunch will be at one, and the same back to the refectory, and then we've got tea and biscuits at three. So first of all, in, uh, we have to do the housekeeping bit, don't we? In case of a, a false alien invasion, I want you all to make your way to the front car park, right? And uh, Fran and Amanda will come out with a clipboard and check your names off. Right, so please don't stay behind for any aliens or anything. Uh, you know where the loos are. Out of here, turn right or go to the reception, and they're by the side there. Um, I think really that that, that, that will do it. Uh, we are very laid back. We're very friendly. Uh, I did do the talk at Watford, and we had a very um, difficult person from the press who didn't announce himself. And you may have seen that I got covered in the Daily Express two or three days ago. Um, that just shows how worried they are. I didn't do an interview, they just turned up at my talk. There were three of us, but they only really covered my one. That was about CERN and the Hadron Collider. Um, so that's that. Um, I should know everybody here, but there may be one or two new people. If you are, come and say hello to me. Right, I'm going to change with tradition, really. Uh, conferences are something that you pay for on the door and then if you want tea and biscuits you go and pay for that and if you want a lunch you go and pay for that and that's the way we do it but not here so you've all been charged between 16 and 15 pounds depending whether you paid um, through the donation button or not that's simply because PayPal steal a pound from us so I had to charge you 16 to get 15. That means if 100 people turn up, there should be 1,500 pounds. Now it's cost 650 pounds to feed you. Uh, we're a trapped audience. Um, they have to use internal caterers. Uh, tea and coffee in the mornings, 220, 230. Tea and coffee in the afternoon, 220, 230. The room hire, 200 pounds. So. It's cost £1,400 to put this on, and if 100 people have paid, there will be £1,500. Now what I'm doing is being absolutely transparent, because there isn't another conference that you will go to where you will be told this. Ooh. I put this on, and we put this on, because it's about the message, it's about you getting together, it's not about making money. There have been two instances uh, with this group where outside people have attempted to uh, take people from the group and make money out of them. So you'd set yourself up and you'd charge three to four times what I charged you to, uh, to meet with me and talk to me. And of course that's why these people are no longer here. And there was uh, recently uh, a meeting somewhere in Derbyshire where I think people paid £90 a head and it was the campsite and the charge was £5 each if you were actually the campsite. So, this isn't about making money. This is about sharing and being part of a family. That's what makes it special. That's what makes us special. It's not that we're better than anybody else. It's that we have chosen to be brave and to believe the truth. Others will come to you and come to it in time. But you really are leading the way. So thank you very much, wherever you've come from, for being here today. Right, before we start, there any questions not about the subject? Is there any questions? Anybody lost their mobile phone or don't know where they're staying? Is everybody okay? Right. Now, Fran, did we have any children here today? No, we were expecting okay, right. All right, it's nothing to worry about. Right, we're going to start. Um, first of all, I want to thank Wynne Keach, who's provided all the electronic equipment. So not only is Wynne going to do a talk, uh, on several subjects today, but he's actually provided all of the equipment today. So, can I have a round of applause for him? <laughs> now, 
we all know what our soul groups are. So we know what our energy soul is. Wynne is Palladian, so anybody here is Palladian, come and have a chat. Those of you who are from Cyrus, there are some fantastic crystal skulls up on here, go and have a chat. Um, and I promise that my reptilian part will be on its best behavior today. <laughs> okay, um, first of all, this is connecting consciousness, which means that we have people from I can't say all over the world, but I can certainly say many countries. And tonight we have uh, a number of... Oh, I can see you there. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Um, there are a number of coordinators here today, wonderfully have come over. Uh, and I wonder if you would, after I've done my presentation, if you'd just like to quickly come up and just say your name and which country you're coordinating. I also need some volunteers. The whole object of community consciousness was to have groups of people in different countries, and in the case of the United States, in the states, different of them, because it's such a big country, so that we could actually have a local control. And that means not my control, but that local group. So in other words, that from time to time I might say, look, we need to do a joint meditation on this or that. But there's nothing stopping a local group creating its own theme. So if a local group decides that there's a big issue in its state or its own country, then it should be able to call in all the other groups to support it. But only if it's a very important issue. And during the presentation, I'm going to hammer home the point that your intention of thought can affect material matters. And even spiritual people, when you get them on their own, actually struggle to understand that by sitting and thinking can actually affect material things. Because of the conditioning we've had on this planet. So, one of the reasons, a small reason for doing the CERN, was to actually prove to humans that they can make their own reality. Something that the elite don't want you to do. So we're going to uh, go through this presentation, then I'm going to get the um, coordinators from some of the countries up, and then we're going to have a quick debate as to how we go with this. And I want some volunteers, if possible, please. Uh, I know Fran doesn't do too much, but you're going to take that role over Fran to try and get them to volunteer. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> this is the presentation I gave at Watford, which um, was very interesting because there was a guy from the Express newspaper who sat next to me, tapping away on a, on a laptop, um, to, to, without saying who he was, and uh, clearly he was there to do the CERN stuff. Now I think that's very interesting because this is what the elite are not happy with. It's like 9-11, you know, even years and years after 9-11, if you do a talk on 9-11, somebody from the security service will turn up because it's something that they just can't let go of, obviously. Here we go. Right, the, the Hadron Collider. Uh, this is an overview, give you some idea of the size of it. It was recently extended. Um, I, they were looking to build a linear collider in Japan, but they didn't have enough time to do that. And that was all just uh, politics to put pressure on the Japanese after their terrible disaster. So if you were bird's eye view, that's what you're looking at. It gives you some huge sign on this. See if we can, that's CERN sector there. And that is the, the tube running round where the materials have collided, allegedly. All right, so what actually is the issue? What was it really designed to do? Was it a weapon? Was it a time machine? Was it a portal opener? Well, it was all of those things. This is off-world technology uh, used and created here on this planet to do a whole range of things. So in other words, when we did our 15th of uh, August, our meditation, we were actually looking to stop uh, a few crazy-minded people attempting to break the connection between living humans and source. We were also wishing to prevent them opening a portal to the fourth dimension. 
Uh, and we'll go back to the, to the beginning here. 21st of December 2012, Wynne uh, very usefully talked about this and explained that something did happen. Remember that um, unawake people expect the earth to open, the volcanoes to erupt, a shower of meteorites. But we know that the change is not physical directly. The change is energetic, which then brings physical change. So we don't look for portents. You think in the Bible, uh, all the holy men were saying, God, send me a sign. So not, nothing's new. People need physical proof. It's only when you evolve that you realize and detect that changes are energetic. So on 21st of December 2012, there was a very important um, change for this planet and actually for the multiverse, not just on this planet. And you'll remember, those of you who've watched me since then, that uh, it was very necessary to um, have a look at the Hadron Collider because they were attempting to use it to nullify the changes that were coming in. And um, uh, we have here a screenshot which shows that it failed to operate at a crucial time on the 21st of December 2012. So that was the first time they had a failure, and they obviously were very upset about that. Here's the, the global meditation. Um, I widely advertise this, and people from all over the world actually look to their local times, and some people are up at 1, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and for that, I'm very grateful, because it showed a commitment. And that's what this was about. It's about showing a commitment. There are too many armchair um, people who sit there and pontificate and don't do anything about it. And why should the planet actually do it for you? You have to show something, and you did. So a small proportion of people carried the human race. Now that's not a grandiose statement, that's the reality. Because in 2012, we needed between two and three million people to be the critical mass of awakening to take us through, and we got that. And you know how many billions of people there are allegedly on this planet. So just a very small proportion, but it's enough. And so when we created Connecting Consciousness, we needed just enough people. I'd rather have a smaller group of very pure-hearted, minded people than a very large group of people who were joining and then leaving three weeks because it wasn't quite what they wanted. And the beauty of this is it doesn't matter what color your skin, it doesn't matter how much money you make, it doesn't matter how well or ill you are. This is about your energy soul that lives in your body. And if that soul knows what's right and is prepared to do something, then well done you. So we have some um, real photos and some graphics here. This is a cutaway. And these are the beams. And of course it goes round and round and collides. Um, the CERN publicity department is very big. It's very important for them to share uh, exactly what they're doing because when they designed it and envisaged it, it wasn't ever going to go wrong. So they created a huge publicity machine um, and of course they have to report now not just what goes well from their perspective but what actually doesn't go well. So we have a wealth of photographs, a wealth of uh, information. Um, this is... Uh, a very interesting point here, uh, the, the Swiss and the French use metric system and the Americans use the imperial system, the same as we do generally, and they were extending the collider and of course the Americans said, okay, well we need to be aware that the, the French use a different system, so we will uh, work that out. They didn't work it out and it was incorrect, literally didn't fit, so this put them back between three months and six months. So literally they worked miles together, getting closer and closer, a bit like the channel tunnel, but they didn't meet in the middle. And that's the, go on Google and, and you'll see the red faces about that. But that, this is actually source intervening. This, is it, this isn't chance, this wasn't some professor who fell asleep over the calculations. These were calculations that were done and done and done, but something happened beyond human control to delay them yet again. And you know, you'd think, wouldn't you, you'd begin to understand that this wasn't meant to be. Yeah. But you see, these scientists are men and women who have families, 
um, they have a pay packet and they have hopefully a pension and if you work on this project where the hell do you go? So they're not going to jump ship unless they've shown something really important. Some very interesting pictures. It gives you the idea of scale here, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. The, 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 the actual um, pipes here, um, they do remind me of the supercomputers that need cooling, although they, they usually use water elsewhere. Right, these are courtesy of Wynn. Thank you, Wynn. Appreciate these. And what we've got here is uh, official pictures from the screenshot uh, showing that um, we had a very interesting situation. We kicked off our meditation at lunchtime on the 15th. And this was widely advertised. So what organization in its right mind fires up at 3 a.m. in the morning? You're talking about hundreds of scientists who either were not allowed to go to bed who were pulled in for a three o'clock fire up. And I'm in no doubt that it was aware to them that there were a very strong connection between this planet and some of its population who were in two-way communication and that something was going to be done at lunchtime, GMT. So in order to beat us and the planet, they fired up at 3 a.m. in the morning. It didn't work. Something very special happened, something very, very special intervened, and this machine didn't work. If you look at the line here, this drops down to four, at four o'clock in the morning it's off. So their plan to fire it up failed. It starts up again, but because the computer is registering a fault, it cuts it off again, comes down, and here we are, lunchtime, they've actually got it working. And lunchtime was when we, across the planet, in our own places, did our group, group consultation for six minutes. After we finished that meditation, it failed again. So it was whacked twice, between three and four in the morning and just after lunchtime. You really think they would understand what's happening, wouldn't you? But they don't. And this is why the, the, the Express newspaper had obviously done an article, because they will know that it, it failed. Right, okay. Some more screenshots here. The, the red false means not working failed, so just read it as not operational failed. And a particularly like is the unidentified foreign object, which actually, I really love it. Look at that. Unidentified foreign object. So the computer decided there was an unidentified foreign object in CERN. And as a result of that, it shut the machine down. I do have to tell you that on this occasion, there were a number of military and satanic remote viewers trying to protect the facility. So they had placed black magicians uh, around inside the facility who were remote viewing as a, a psychic defense. So they were expecting this. Um, this is scale here. This looks like Land of the Giants. Uh, that's actually a phone. It'll give you an idea of the side. There's an interesting big button here. And it says emergency stop and, and Swiss French and, and English. And the very interesting cable going up here. It would be nice to follow that cable and see where it went, wouldn't it? Okay, well, this is the proton physics, the ramp down, which means turn it down. Uh, unidentified foreign objects in 8L6, magnets quenched, induced by losses. So some loss occurred. Uh, fast losses, blah, blah, etc, etc. So what we're showing you is evidence that physical matter can be affected by thought. This is their own, it's a bit like NASA's photographs or video from their own spacecraft showing aliens. You can't argue with it. You know, this isn't coincidence. You made this happen. And what you've done is not illegal because there isn't a court in the world that can understand that somebody can do something hundreds of miles away from it. 
It's a difference if you go and throw a stick of dynamite over the fence. So there's nothing illegal here. But I'm in a difficult position. You didn't work on isolation. First of all, you worked with those close to you and in any other part of the country. You also worked with two off-planet entity groups. There were two uh, alien groups who were assisting. This is interesting. This is a weather map. This is Switzerland and CERN here. And you'll notice that there's a huge thunderstorm. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that, that this CERN device requires 7% of France's total electric output. That's how huge it is. And if that gets taken out, there's a backup in Switzerland, but I think that only provides between a quarter and 30% of the required. There was, and you've heard today how lightning actually comes from the ground upwards. Lightning doesn't come from the sky downwards. And I mean, how many schoolboys and girls would actually think that lightning, you know, they, they think lightning comes from the top to the bottom. This is the lies that people are being taught when lightning comes from the ground upwards. So what you've got here is a weather map, and I need to tell you that the main generating station that supplied the power to CERN was taken out. They switched to the reserve power, which was at Switzerland. It did not give them enough power to do what they wanted to do. So ladies and gentlemen, the planet actually worked with us. The planet actually did a lightning strike and took it out. You know, if you were high elite, wouldn't you begin to think that times were changing. So, you know, this is the reality. You can change it, but you have to be a pure heart and pure mind. All right, just very, very quickly, um, uh, I got in serious trouble, not for talking about aliens, but for saying that President Putin was an all right guy. That seemed to upset a huge number of people in the elite. I really don't like that. Uh, the... Uh, the point that, that Putin has clones is not accurate. There was a huge uh, hoo-ha about shapes of ears. Uh, can you remember that, anybody? Yeah. All right, well, if you're cloned, then your ears are all the same. So these were body doubles. And the reason that Putin is not dead is that he doesn't even tell his closest security staff where he's going until five minutes beforehand, because the CIA had a track record of infiltrating, etc., etc. So we want to talk very quickly about, about Russia, it's very important. Uh, I'm not saying that President Putin is a good man. What I'm saying is he's the right man at this time. He is a counterbalance. And that's what's happening here. The, the, the earth is being balanced in many, many ways. And for the first time in our history, for a long time, the balance is swinging back to the side of good. So we have a situation where um, this country, some of the, uh, the ruling elite, and some of the ruling elite in America, attempted to destabilize President Putin and try and remove him. And there was a hint squad sent to assassinate Putin, and two days afterwards uh, to do the same to Obama. Both failed. Uh, you can understand why Putin's a little bit uh, unhappy with the West. Uh, also, false information was sent to the Russians, uh, suggesting that um, NATO was in a position to launch some form of strike and hope that uh, Putin would react and then sell that to the British and the American public as an aggressive act by Putin and Putin didn't rise to it. So in, in many, many ways Putin has actually shown that he's a statesman as opposed to a politician. And this is the guy that rides around on a motorbike, part of a, of a group. Um, so it just goes to show that what the establishment portray as solid and uh, the way we need to be is just nonsense. Because it doesn't matter who or what your background, if you actually have a clear mind, a pure mind, and you want the best, even if that doesn't always gel with what we expect, then it's your part being played out for the universe. I want to talk about the parents. Um, this is a term that I am familiar with. There are other names for it. Uh, there's a, a guy called the Ruiner, and uh, a lot of what he's saying is true. Some of it uh, I'm not uh, able to, to agree with. But there is a situation where some of the uh, highly hybridized beings have decided that it's time to either physically end their life 
or to disappear underground. And I was having a conversation with, with Wynne and with Fran uh, on the reduction of um, chemtrails. Uh, the last six months have seen chemtrails being crisscrossed, like a lattice, like a waffle. That's how they've been doing it. And I wanted to show a picture that Fran has, but we don't have it, which is my fault. Which is the picture of... No, which is a picture of, uh, from Fran's window, of massive chemtrailing, literally right over a house, but a... Uh, alien craft actually up in the chemtrails, so counteracting it. So we have a situation where some of these hybridized, um, I won't call them elite humans because that's to give them a, a title I don't want to give them, but they are hybridized creatures who control the black budgets of most of the Western world. Now you take them out and that commanding force is gone. So the individual who is responsible for releasing black budget money for chemtrailing is no longer on the planet. So I'm not saying that chemtrails will finish full stop, but they're greatly reduced. And you will now begin to see what we saw in the 1970s, which were vapor trails, not chemtrails. So there's a great reduction in that. Um, for those of you who are interested in the net that surrounds the, the earth, and that's one thing I wanted to deal with, but we've really been taken up with other issues at the moment. Uh, the the uh, planet Saturn has rings which are not made of ice but are made of crystal and, and I know many of you are aware that that is an aerial, it's a transmitter and on the far side of the moon, what you call the dark side of the moon there was a booster or a relay station that is actually being switched off I'm not sure which faction has switched that off but it's meant now that if you are a very very powerful uh, energy soul you can now potentially escape the planet fairly easily. And some of these so-called parents are deciding that the game's up, it's all over with, and they're gonna leave the planet. And that's exactly what they intend to do. Human elite, two, two factions, we go below that level, we have two groups now absolutely diametrically opposed. Um, we mentioned the Knights Templars, believe it or not, the Knights Templars uh, have a fairly beneficial uh, assistance here because they don't want the end of the earth. Their job is to prepare and protect and are thoroughly frightened to death by their brethren on the other side who are literally looking at mass destruction. So even within the highest ranks, uh, they are splitting openly and obviously. There have always been these schisms, but now they are open to the public. The US military, please don't always think the military are going to do what they're told to do by the, the psychopaths. Uh, if you read my newsletter, you know that um, all of uh, the United States military reserves are at their maximum, whether it's bottles of holding water, whether it's bullets, grenades, they are now at 100%. Um, I would imagine that most of the uh, commanders in the military see themselves as a buffer between the citizenry and the elite. In other words, they see themselves as the firewall. Uh, and I don't believe many American soldiers will shoot on their own people. Unlike the American police, big difference. Uh, in this country, it ain't going to happen because we don't have the military capability anymore. You have a population in this country of 60 million and an army of only 100,000. You couldn't even use it. It's not, not going to. It's, it's America where we have to see it play out. In Britain it is the energy play out and the money play out because of the city of London. In America it's more to do with the physical. And that's always the way it's been. Petroleum. We're reaching a position now in, in this world where it's no longer viable to, to, to drill out. I mean, uh, $70, $80 a barrel, what is it in the moment? $60 a barrel. Well, even at about $80 a barrel, it's not actually viable to pump oil out. So we're going to see a moving away from petroleum. But not because people believe in the planet, not because they think it's wrong, 
but simply because the corporations are not going to make the sort of money that they think. But the, the, the clever point here is that it's moving regardless. So they think they're making the move because it's a financial situation. The reality is that other energies are at work here, ensuring that they are being forced to actually move towards a, a different sort of energy. What we have to watch for is the corporations will move from one group to another. Um, uh, I don't have any problem with electronic cigarettes, but if I was a tobacco king in the Western world, I certainly would be moving my stocks and shares into electronic cigarettes because I will need to survive and that's why I move it across. Obviously, if you're in a developing country, then they're selling cigarettes as fast as they can. So what the corporations do is look to see how things are moving, change the product, and get in on it. Um, I did try and do a video which worked on my PC, but probably won't because Wynn's explained to me why it won't work, so that's my fault. Some of you will have seen the explosions that occurred in some chemical plants in China. I'm sure you will have connected that with uh, pressure being placed on the Chinese government. You have a small uh, crazy group in America, who have a small crazy group in China. Uh, they are absolutely furious that China and Russia are working together and attempted to bring down the legitimate, if that's a word we can use, the legitimate Chinese government. So we had the explosions very closely with the economic situation. And I talked to financial people here who just don't understand it. Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank lost $8 billion in one day. That's the total trading for that bank for one year. To lose $8 billion in one day. Had they lost $8 billion in the second day, we would have had a global collapse. Well, that's why they all pulled out of the market. And HSBC, you won't, you won't hear this on the news, HSBC basically went to, um, I can't remember the order, they went to the central bank for the bailout, refused, the International Monetary Fund refused, they even came to the Bank of England for a bailout. That was refused. Finally, they went to Washington. They went to the American government and said, would you bail us out? And the Americans agreed. The very fact that they agreed was enough to stabilize the situation. Now, why on earth would an American government bail out HSBC? And the reason is that allegedly, the gold allegedly in Fort Knox is there. It isn't. The gold of America, what's left of it, is in HSBC on the paper trail. So if HSBC went down the tubes, there would be an audit. Of course there would, and they wouldn't find any gold. So they couldn't afford to show the world they didn't have any gold. So they were forced to say to HSBC, oh, we'll back you up. And that was enough to, to keep it going. So America doesn't have the gold that it used to have. This won't work, will it, Win? No, it's not going to work, because I didn't download the extra bit to it. All right, next time I'll speak to you before I do it. Not learned a lesson. Right, what are the establishments saying? The financial situation in general, it's been talked up. Everything's okay. Uh, what's really interesting is that if you go to some parts of the West Midlands, you can generally say, what recession? And if you go to some parts of London, what recession? But for every other part of our country, and I include, obviously, Scotland and Wales here in the financial sense, uh, it hasn't bounced back. And what the corporations are doing is squeezing as much money out of us as they can. And this is the mantra for the corporations. We'll make as much money as we can, as quickly as we can, for as long as we can, from as many people as we can, and as cheaply as we can. So it's a little bit like in the 1970s. Uh, you went had a B&B, &B, and this isn't, I mean, it's nice here. You went to a B&B, &B and you paid your money, and you got your bed, and you got your breakfast. So what corporations do now is say, how can we make more money for the same thing? So many places you go to, and they say, oh yeah, but the breakfast is extra. You used to be able to get on an airplane, not that I would get on one, but you used to get on an airplane and sit where you want. No, not anymore. You have to pay extra to sit next to your friend. I remember going to the cinema and you paid one price and you got in. Now when you go to the cinema, you, oh, do you want the better seats? £2.50. 
So it's this idea of add-ons. It's we're giving you the same service we did last year, but we're going to charge you more. And this is how the corporations are trying to build it, and we've seen a huge increase in marketing calls. The last six months, the corporations are absolutely desperate, and many people are, are being absolutely bombarded with them. So the financial situation in general is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Right, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott. Anybody from Texas here? Yeah, well, I did that deliberately. Thank you. I knew you would be here. Uh, it's a bit hard for us in this country to understand because we don't have the same legal system as in America, the Constitution. But in America, the different states are entitled to a percentage of the gold. And so the governor of Texas wrote to President Obama and said, we would like our gold back, please. And he's asked for about 800 million. So it's just under a billion. And although uh, they're absolutely adamant that Texas is not intending on starting its own currency, uh, I, I've been told it is, and it's going to be called the Lone Star. So the governor of Texas believes there will be such a huge economic crash in America, he wants Texans to have their own currency backed up by gold. The governor in California, it's not as easy for him because they have huge satanic influences, but he's also attempting to do the same thing. A number of other, we call it seeding from the Union. There are a number of other uh, American states that wish to seed from the Union because they don't want to go down the pan. Don HSBC, Damien McBride, anybody read his tweets six weeks ago? They were taken off. Did you? Fantastic. So not only do you come from Texas, but you read tweets. <laughs> That's a compliment. Most, most Americans uh, are very, very American-focused, and it's really nice that you've taken an interest. Damien McBride was nothing to do with us. He was an establishment and is an establishment figure. He was uh, a financial advisor to Gordon Brown when Gordon Brown was Prime Minister. So a very establishment person sent some tweets, and we've got them here. Right, Damien McBride, advice on looming crash, number one. Get hard cash in a safe place now. Don't assume banks and cash points will be open or bank cards will work. Second one, crash advice number two. Do you have enough bottled water, tinned goods, and other essentials at home to live a month indoors? If not, get shopping. Crash advice number three, agree a rally point with your loved ones in case transport and communication gets cut off somewhere where you can all head to. This is not somebody in the alternative media. This is a man who advised the Prime Minister of Britain, who has the guts to actually go public and tell you what I and others have been telling you. But of course this was stomped on straight away. So here's evidence. It's a shame the Daily Express didn't come and do it a proper interview with this man. So I, I, it's not about fear, you, you know me by now, but it's about being careful and being prepared. I don't believe in 12 months of disaster, but I do believe there will be a few weeks of difficulties. And there's absolutely no harm in storing some tin food and bottled water. And if you know it doesn't come to fruition, well, you've got tin food and bottled water. False flags, um, terrorism, <coughs> explosion, <coughs> fake alien landing. Notice that I call it alien landing uh, and not invasion. Mm, that's interesting, we'll come to that. So terrorist uh, attacks have been used for twofold. First, to destabilize a community, but more importantly actually, to put pressure on that government. So when the Canadian Parliament had the shooting, that wasn't to destabilise the people, it was to put pressure on the Canadian government not to ditch the US dollar. So many terrorist attacks are not genuine, they are created by an elite organisation to put pressure on the local government. Uh, explosion. Um, there is a very small group of crazy people who genuinely think that some sort of disaster would benefit them. 
Because remember, they are so disassociated from us that they have no interest in us at all. So a large explosion um, causing infrastructural damage might play into their hands. And we'll talk about what they would see that's helping them in a the minute. Fake alien landing. Um, this was mm, sort of pushed away about a year ago. People were saying, no, no, that's not going to happen. We must remember that Laura Eisenhower, who actually spoke with Werner von Braun, uh, and Werner von Braun actually told her years ago that that was the plan, to do a fake alien invasion. That was the point. Um, and we have evidence, and you've seen the, the presentations I've done to give you evidence. I'm just going to push a couple of pictures now. The reason for uh, any disaster is to from their perspective, create a new world order. And you've seen that, whether it's on banknotes or whether it's on presentations, you know what the new world order is, and I'm not going to try and tell you. Remember, this is not our vision of how things are going to work. This is their vision. Our vision is completely different. This doesn't mean this is going to come to pass. This simply means this is what they wish. And I've shown perhaps many, many people outside of this room that ordinary, decent humans can change their own timeline. Right, here we go. This is Pope Francis, and you remember, of course, that he uh, said in a speech he would baptize aliens. Don't see this as a, a one-off strange. This was part of an orchestrated program to begin the possibility of an alien landing. Why else would the Pope do that? Why else would the Pope recently go to America and make a speech about the world? The Pope doesn't speak for the Hindus, the Muslims, the Jews. He only speaks for one faction of the Christian religion. So why wasn't he actually at the United Nations making the speech? Why did he go to America? Because he is their linchpin for the New World Order. He is the key man. Remember the prophecies? This, this, not this one here, but the one we have at the moment, is the last pope. That's the prophecy. But this one is important because he was the one you know, who said, Pope Francis, I'm going to baptize aliens if they arrive. And, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, a journalist said, did, did we hear you right? Uh, you won't have seen this. Did you mean aliens? And Pope Francis uh, said, and I'm going to get this word perfect, yes, that's right, the green things from Mars. <laughs> this was a genuine comment. Now, we're not saying they're green from Mars, but basically the Pope was saying to him, yes, that's exactly right. If an alien comes here and wants to be baptised, um, I'll, I'll do that. There we are. So, we have to remember the Sumerian rules, the clay tablets, when alluded to that. Okay, Zachariah Stitchin was absolutely correct when he uh, read the tablets. Where we were incorrect is their positioning and the time in the layers they were placed there. In other words, wouldn't it be interesting if somebody landed in a spaceship and said, I'm your God, I created you? Very interesting. But in order for that to have any type of resonance, somebody on this planet who is a religious person would have to hook it in by saying, oh yes, God's arrived. Let's just go back a bit. Yes, well done. Star Trek. Gene Rodenbury, um, not just a visionary, but somebody who had seen uh, a real alien spacecraft when he was on an internal flight, looking out the porthole of the window, saw it, and then went and connected with some psychic groups and then the, the FBI and then the CIA. Um, and this is taken from Star Trek, and I just uh, love it because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is serious. You see, you are all awake. So you're sitting here and thinking, oh, come on, for God's sake. But there are so many people who are not awake. And whether they believe it or not, there are people in positions of responsibility who actually think they can sell it. Hell, they sold 9-11, didn't they? So here we are. I like this piece of artwork because here we've got uh, a Knight Templar or a Crusader. He is an American GI from the 40s. He is a knight, he is a modern soldier, uh, and so on and so forth. In other words, you have to appeal to everybody. You can't just appeal to one faith. 
You know, these are the pictures. So on one hand, the British governments have consistently said there is no such thing as aliens and there is no such thing as UFOs. And yet, they approved as part of their national curriculum schools in England and Wales, but not Scotland, to have UFO drills. Um, and many, many parents have sent me photographs uh, of their schools. Always primary school. This is really important because we can extrapolate their plans. Because by showing fake alien crashes to five and six and seven year olds, then you can say, hmm, well by the time those people are 18, 19 and 20, is that when it's intending to happen? So that being a, a human you say, when have I seen this before? Oh yes, when I was at primary school, so I know what to do. So what we've got here is a government or governments that funded and it was very expensive because as a real police officer, they had to be paid. The fire brigade were involved in each one, and so were the ambulance. Uh, the children would come into school as normal. The only people who knew were the head, the deputy head, the secretary, and the class teacher. Certain classes where children were described as uh, interesting or developed were chosen, so it's not the whole school. They would be brought into the assembly area and then uh, the class teacher or group teacher would say um, a UFO, and that's exactly the word they use, a UFO has crashed in the playground. We're waiting for the police to tell us it's okay to go outside. A police officer, a real police officer, not an actor, comes in and says it's okay. So the two or three classes go out there is a model of a, of a, a spacecraft crashed into the, to the part of the school. The tape is around it and the police officer there. Why would you do that when you sell to, to adults there is no such thing as aliens and UFOs don't exist? Why would you spend thousands of pounds in England and Wales to run this? And when I challenged them on it, they said it's about inclusion. So I said, how can it be inclusive to include something that you say doesn't exist? Or well, we don't know, it's just literally, that's what it comes under. The part of the national curriculum was inclusion. What I would suggest to you is this is programming to get these children so by the time they're older and this is mocked up, then they buy it. Here's a woman's private company, which is uh, making sure she can't get her face taken. And she was part of the contract and she would go around and be dressed in a biological suit and do testings. These are really young children, so therefore the UFO is very small, so that it doesn't overpower them. But look, we've got a crater where it's gouged as it's landed, and little fires burning here as well. That reminds me of the Roswell. So, and the obligatory cone and tape. And as I've said to people time and time again, if you are told that there's a, a UFO, would you like to come and have a look at it? You know that's fake. But when military knock on your door at three o'clock in the morning and say, we're moving you out to a reception center five miles away, then that's a real crash. Um, I'll show this and I'll keep on showing it. The wonderful um, parent from a nursery noticed the rug on the ground and it was an inclusive rug. So there are lots and lots of children all holding hands and she noticed a gray alien. So she said to the teacher, um, oh, that, that's an interesting mistake she made, where she said that looks like an alien, to which the teacher just said, I, I don't know. And the parents said, um, after speaking to me, can, can we buy it when you throw it away? The next week, the rug wasn't there. It was out in the playground by the skip, <coughs> waiting to be thrown in the skip to be taken away. Surreptitiously, um, God bless her, this is a big bin here. The, the side with the alien had been pushed against the bin so it couldn't be seen. And the reason it's bent back like that is her hand, she was brave and she actually pulled back the rug to take a picture of it. Because she knew that what she'd seen was very important. I phoned the company who made this um, and I was told that that uh, character, they just said the, the child with the big head has been replaced by an Eskimo. So you can't get these anymore. Again, 
you know, this just shows you the coordination taking place. It takes companies and organisation across the board to make these. But they don't know what they're doing, or why they're doing it, but somebody at the top does. Um, this is not a real photo, it's a, a mock-up, but it's so good that that's actually what one of the species would look like. Okay, so that is, I think, whoever's created that has either seen them themselves or has uh, spoken to a number of people and really created it very well. What's interesting is the nose. Uh, remember Whit Whitley Schreiber's book and some of the, the Lyran beings, actually, um, not quite as dramatic as that. But they have noses, whereas the program life form, the greys, the big almond eyes, just have two holes. So you, you can begin to understand the different groupings here. I love the picture. Um, it's not a trick, this is a genuine picture. You have to understand that the queen is seen not as the most powerful thing on the planet, but as the person we get our approval from. So Bush here is acting as a little boy, really, really excited that he is next to uh, somebody who can give him approval. If you understand uh, Satanism, if you understand the way it works, we have what we call a grandmother. Not like you would understand the grandmother, grandmother. And the grandmother is the controller. And the reason we like it is because George Bush is giving the devil's sign. We'll just go back. There he is. Okay? And that's why he's got the, 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 the grinny face. Because he's doing something that he's always wanted to do. Be with grandmother. 1969, the very first time that the 666 symbol and the devil symbol were used on the same photograph. Prior to this, they've always been one or the other. This is the first time it was put together. You need to understand that the Beatles uh, were a good group of people who were manipulated um, because from the elite's point of view, it was too good an option to miss. <coughs> Anybody got this LP? Yeah. I'm going to just ring a bell with anybody. Okay. What you're seeing is not a trick photography, it's not photoshopped. This is a satanic force. I'm going to tell you, because you know that I met John Lennon, and you know that I met John Lennon's father several occasions. I can tell you that all of these boys here were drugged for this photograph. Yeah. This is a picture of meat from a butcher and dolls, girl dolls, I think, with their heads ripped off. That's what you're looking at here. Look, that head is not attached to the body. Look at their faces, absolutely shocked. But this is part of a publicity. Now this picture wasn't used because you can't sell with faces like that. These, that face won't sell. So they were told you need to be happy. So the next picture came from the, the LP which was sold and then pulled back ego. It's called Beatles Yesterday and Today. This is a genuine LP release. So why would you use perhaps potentially the, 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 the best known, the most successful pop group, why would you stick broken dolls on them and pieces of meat? Why, why wasn't there a huge outcry? Well there was, but not enough to really get to the bottom of it. What is going on here? Why are we seeing babies like this? This is the manipulation that the general public, who are not here today, unfortunately, are just oblivious to. Okay, the board game Illuminati 1995. Anybody got it? One person has it. Go on eBay and you can buy it for about 10, 15 quid. I suggest you do, not because I'm a shareholder in eBay, <laughs> but because in 1995, as part of the game, there were two trading cards or cards, and we have the Twin Towers on the back and the Pentagon in the middle being blown up. 1995. It's all been planned and all worked out. 
But remember, this is their planning and working out, because there wasn't anything to challenge them apart from individuals. We now have a group called Connecting Consciousness. And that group challenged the CERN device and prevented it from working. So this is their timeline. Okay, so that occurred. Their future plans mustn't be allowed to come to fruition. And we can stop it. This is for Wynn. This is the text that you're all familiar with. That is the implants that you're all familiar with. This is what we're not so familiar with. That's, um, yeah, this is injectable, that's grains of sugar. Uh, as from January of next year, it is illegal, or will become illegal in Australia to claim unemployment benefit unless you are inoculated. In Australia, from January next year, it will be illegal to claim um, pension unless you've been inoculated. And in one country, in Norway, they are forcibly going to inoculate all the newborn babies. And people are now literally moving out of that town because it's quite a spiritual place, Norway. So, you don't have to kill people to control them. You can probably inject them to control them. So there's always been this debate. Do you wipe out free course of the planet or you, do you just implant them? So the little black dot is the chip. And this is five years old, so I wonder how small they are now. Dad, um, for people who were sort of surprised and shocked um, at the banter between Wynne and myself, uh, it's a very, very good working relationship. Uh, Wynne is a Palladian, and I have a percentage of reptilian in me, and uh, I'm quite well known to this particular character, uh, who walks the halls of the Vatican. Um, but what Wynne and I demonstrate is what everyone in this room is demonstrating. It's not what you were, necessarily what you are, it's what you choose to be. If you choose to be a good person, you're going to be good. If you choose to be a bad person, you'll be bad. It doesn't matter how you dress or where you come from. But unfortunately, unaware humans are all into labels. And they make judgments and decisions based on how a person looks. Gene Broberry again. Star Trek, The Return of the Archons. Gene seemed to know a few bits, didn't he? Because our greatest enemy is artificial intelligence. When touched on that. And I'm, uh, like you, a creature of divine living. And that's got to be a lot better than something that wasn't made by the divine creator. Yeah. Our first thought, you would say, shadow beings. But artificial intelligence can actually manifest itself. And I'm quite happy with that as a potential manifestation of artificial intelligence. Not just shadow beings, okay? Gene Roenberry again. In a way, it looks a bit Lyran, only slightly. But I'm quite happy if artificial intelligence wanted to manifest itself, it might choose something like that. Observe the snake eyes. I keep on talking about the Matrix film because those of you who've watched it see time and time again how much resonation there is with the time that we are now. Those two co- Okay, so it wasn't the NSA, it was the battery. What a shame. Um, so with, with, the, with, with the actual... Uh, Wynn, what are you doing? Okay, so with the, the Polish brothers, they actually used a system to try to alert you. Uh, my number is seven. Many of you have seven as your number. And although you can remember Neo into the controller's office and screen after screen of previous Neos, we are told this is the seventh time that humans have got to that point. And this is the seventh time that this planet, with its human population, has got to this point. 
six times we've got here and fallen back. We cannot afford to fail again. This must be it. This really must be it, seventh time. The future, we know there's an alternative. There really is. And I'm just going to make a, a statement because I know that this conference get together will be reported back. So I'm just going to make a quick little statement to all the people who to all the people who work in elite organizations who are beginning to have a problem with their conscience. Stop what you're doing. You may have children. You You may have children. You may have other family members. Unless you stop now, then you will be condemned for the rest of your lives. Because what we're looking at is a resurgent human race. People who are not prepared to be pushed around. People who see the truth and want fairness. So these people who um, are in banking or government or military, now is the time to actually be strong and brave and don't say, well, I've got a pension. Well, it's a good wage packet. It's time to think about which side of the fence you're on. So I'm actually saying to them that if they move now while the hand is one minute to midnight, they still can be free. But once the hand strikes 12, it's too late. And there are some people who can never be forgiven. Think about the pictures I showed of the Beatles. Think what that image is really telling you. Such people can never be forgiven. But many can. And many people in these elite organizations are blackmail themselves. Many men are told that unless they do what they do, their children or their wives will be found on the railway line or pushed over a cliff or serially raped. And it's that fear which keeps them bound in. And just as connecting consciousness we formed as a group, I would say to these people, don't stand on isolation, form as a group. You know, I've gone on record as saying, if everybody stopped going to the petrol station on Monday, then they'd bring the prices down. But people don't work in unison because they don't understand. That's what consciousness is about. It's about communicating as a group, that through a group we can bring change. So basically, the gauntlet's down, not just from me, but from many other speakers who many years before me have stood up here or on a, on a platform and have spoken their truth. And that truth resonates with people who are awake. But the difference is, that now the New World Order gun fired. And this is it. To the times of your lives, whether you're 20 years old or 80 years old, this is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been trained for. Don't let yourselves down. Don't let the people down. Don't let the planet down. And we've shown that we can do in our own way something that others never even dreamed of. Didn't cost millions of dollars didn't have great glitzy films or expensive booklets, just ordinary people throughout the world who were brave enough to work together and believe that something can be better than this. so much. Uh, can the coordinators, if they're here, just quickly pop up? Who have we got? Simon? Yep. Before you go on, um, the receptionist just said that there's a car in the car park that's unlocked with the door wide open. Renault, who's got Renault? SL51LL. Oh, no. SD51LL. Right. 
Could, can you go and can someone go with her, please? We'll when, when come with you. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, so what we'll do is just the coordinators, unless you've already gone home early, can you just put your hands up for me? Have they gone home, Fran? Yeah, where are they? Oh, that's... Come on, can you pop up for me? Come on. Come on, where's she? Yeah, come on, come. Can you come up? Where's Marcella? Where's Marcella? Marcella's gone. All right, I, I know that someone's gone. All right, well, we have one brave person here. Do you want to just tell us your name and which country? Um, Evelyn, and uh, from a country generally known as Germany. Generally known as Germany. Sorry, commonly, commonly. Okay, well that's fine. Well, obviously there are more coordinators, but they're not here tonight. So thank you ever so much for coming. Like many people, you've really made a strong effort to be here. Coordinators' roles are to work with people who are part of connected consciousness in a country to feed back information to me and to pass on information through. The problem with, with government is we understand that we elect somebody and that person makes all the decisions for us. That's, that's just nonsense. So with connected consciousness, I want the different groups to actually create how they think they need to go within a framework, to actually have real responsibility, to be able to make real choices. But we need coordinators in that own language, but also English, so that I can be part of that. So if there's anybody here who's interested in being a coordinator for a country, if there's anybody who feels that they can offer any sort of um, administrative assistance or web assistance, anything like that, even though we may not need that help now, it would be very useful to have that. We can work individually, we can work as groups, but there are some causes that we must all work together on. I was hoping to punch some holes in the net. I don't need to now because the booster station is off. There are some very big holes in that net already. Many of you, when the time comes, if you choose, won't come back here. Whereas that wasn't previously possible before. So there may be other issues that affect your country. And so I'd be looking for you to contact so that we can then decide which ones need doing. Okay. We have, so, we have, I, I yeah. We, we get in touch, yeah. The whole object about this is to be able to talk in your mother tongue. Yeah. All right. Because just because America speaks English doesn't mean America speaks for the world. So I want French, Spanish, Italian, anybody else to at least have the opportunity to be part of it. Thank you. That's a good point. What, what we're saying here is that there are many people like us in this room, but the problem is that in some countries the government's just basically either uh, turning a blind eye or actually effectively um, curtailing talk. Human consciousness, human consciousness has risen up so much over the last few years. In Great Britain, we have an evil man called Jimmy Sowell. I'm mentioning it because we can learn from this. For 50 years, this man was sheltered and protected. But human consciousness has risen to such a level that it was no longer possible to keep the truth from the public. And who would be an evil person in politics now? Because it's becoming harder and harder for them to push things through or hide things. <coughs> Five, six, seven years ago, it was very easy for them. But because human consciousness is rising, and, and I would say to you within the next six months to two years, human consciousness across the planet will rise to such a level 
that the things we talk about here, instead of being seen as off the wall or crazy, will actually become near mainstream. And so that change will be caused as human consciousness rises and governments who are desperate to keep control will have to give ground. If you look at this country's history, one reform after another over 200 years brought a certain type of democracy. Going from a situation where women were not allowed to vote to when they could vote. That isn't because governments believe in it, it's because they're terrified of losing control and they're giving ground. And exactly the same thing will happen. Now, I don't know that we've got much time for questions because it's quarter to seven. I'll, I'll, are there many questions? Was it? Well, we may not get any food tonight. Are you quite happy to go without questions and then just have a chat? Yeah, shall we do that then? Just, I want to thank you ever so much for attending. Whether you've come from just up the road to Scarborough or whether you've come thousands of miles, you've made a commitment and you've shown what's important to you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the strength and belief that you have for the human race. That's so important. It's not about the national lottery. It's not about the latest pair of shoes or mobile phone. This is about something fundamental that is happening in your lifetime. And the crazy thing is that the vast majority of the people out there just don't see it. For them, the day ticks on exactly the same. I would much rather be awake and have difficulties than have what might be considered an easy life but not know the truth. You all know the truth, so you're blessed. Unfortunately, with that blessing comes challenges. Right, Fran, have I missed anything out? What do we need to do? Right.